dear student i am dr harold thomas professor in applied geology dr hari singh gaur vishwavidyalaya sagar today in this course i will deliver my lecture on classification of sedimentary rock based on grain size today i will proceed under the following heads introduction classification of sedimentary rocks and types like rudaceous arenaceous siltstone and argillaceous etc hope it will be useful for you try to be regular in course the factor of great size is one of the most used for the classification of sedimentary rock four groups may be distinguished first rudaceous second arenaceous third silt rocks and fourth argillaceous this grouping is also partially chemical and mineralogical from the rudaceous to the argillaceous rock an increasing definition of chemical and mineral composition can be traced another mode of grouping the limestone mud rock is according to the agent most prominent in producing their present character of aqueous water form eolian wind form glacier ice form another mode according to the location of deposition of marine continental fluvial equestrian lacustrian etc rocks which consisting chiefly of grave gravels pebbles marbles and boulders loose matrix of the class are gravel pebble beds boulders beds source tolls when connected they form conglomerates and breccia a fundamental distinction between angular and rounded fragments depending on the amount of transport the material has suffered in the foundation of the subdivision in this group between scrap tolls and breccia on the one hand and single and conglomerate on the other in the first case the material has suffered little or no transport it has singly accumulated at the foot of a slope in the second class the fragments have undergone considerable transport in water and have consequently become more or less rounded the angular rudaceous rock or breccia are very heterogeneous in composition the fragments may consist of any type of rocks which has undergone sub aerial weathering conglomerates consist only of the more durable fragments which by reason of their hardness and toughness have been enabled to survive the effect of transport and is doing so have been warm warm down and rounded huge accumulation of the tolls or screed which occur at the base of the slope in semi arid desert or polar region where disintegration is the chief mode of weathering are example of loose rudaceous deposit of angular material while breccia are mainly formed under sub aerial condition they may infrequently become of marine origin other type of breccia are those formed by the disintegration action of volcanic explosion volcanic breccia 
are called agglomerate. It is composed chiefly of agnate material, but may contain non volcanic fragment brought up from the basement of the volcanic or torn from the side of the vent. Agglomerate is a heap, heaps up a tumulus mass of blocks of all size in the vicinity of the eruption origin. Brescia may also be formed along places of movement of the crust. These fest or crust brescia represent first stage of myelinization or milling of rocks. Intra formational brescia are met by the cracking and breaking up of clay or silt under the sun heat or by drying and the incorporation of the angular fragments in a succeeding bed of sand. Loose rhodaceous deposit with rounded fragments are described as gravel, pebbles, beds or single gravel consists of more or less rounded fragments of diameter between 2 mm and 10 mm. Pebbles bed or singly practically syn synonymous consist of long fragment ranging up to 50 mm or 2 inches in diameter. Cobbles and boulders beds are formed by terrestrial action where large rivers flow from mountain valley onto the an adjacent lowland. They are built up of alluvial fen at the mouth of each valley and in course of time may become conflict one with another along a mountain front. In this way formation many hundreds or even thousands of feet thick are now being produced along the margin of the greater mountain ranges. Rocks consisting chiefly of material of sands, grains, loose materials are solids when consolidated they form sandstone, grits, arcos, gravex, etc. The arnaceous rocks, however, complex mostly of quartz with subordinate feldspar are necessary, highly siliceous sand may be classified as marine, equestrian, locustrian, fluvetile, desert, fluvo, glacial and volcanic. The first four groups are loosely allied in origin and character might be close together as aqueous sands. The grains are generally subangular and well sorted. Each type may, however, contain organic fragments con constant with the environment in which it was accumulated. Coastal sand dunes, which are often closed with desert sands or aeolian or wind formed, are mainly aqueous sands drifted some little distance by wind action and have suffered so little further rounding that in most cases they cannot be distinguished from marine sands. Desert sands show the most prefaces rounding of grain which is carried down to the particles of very small dimension. They are frequently very free from dust or mica flanks. Their constituents have been blown away by the persistent desert winds. Fluvo glacier sands are distinguished by the shape, angularity or angular of their fragments and their unsorted characters. Most glacier sands yield a very large and varied suit 
of the heavy minerals. Volcanic sand accumulate around volcanic Iceland and are to be identified by the igneous nature of their constituents, their angularity and good stiffification. Some sands are distinguished by the connecting of some one constituents forming magnetic sand, garnet sand, monazite sand, etc. Other by abnormal composition as sand composes of organic fragments of or basalt. The cementation of sands grains to form sandstone since sandstone may be formed by the cementation of any kind of sands they may also be classified of marine fluvial desert etc in addition to the common siliceous calcareous and argillaceous and ferrogenous cements other substances such as gypsum and barite may also occasionally act as a binary material connect is usually deposited between the grains but silica may occasionally form form out growth up on the quartz grain in optical continuity with them where the interspaces are completely filled a very solid compact hard rock is then formed which is formed quartzite a root coarse sandstone with angular grain is known as grit sandstone with abundance of feldspar usually derived from the disintegration of granite is an arcosis. Gravex is sandstone lane in color as the name indicates derived from the west of an area of miscellaneous rocks howling basic igneous types slates and sandstone. Both arcos and gravex consist of material which has undergone comparatively uh, little transport and the fragments are usually coarse, angular and unsorted. Many type of sandstone contain layers in which flakes of white mica are abundant micaceous sandstone. The mica may be mixed with silt or clay material in thin beds or lacunae and may cause the rock to split into thin slab which are coated with the spangle of mica sandstone of this character with calcareous cement which is split readily along the micaceous layers into the slab suitable for paving is called flaggy sandstone or flaggy stones. Free stone is uniform thick bedded sandstone with few divisional planes. It can be cut or works easily in any direction and consequently formed a good building stone. The term free stone is also applied to some limestone of similar character. Silt and silt stone rock consisting chiefly of material of silt grade, silt and silt stone. This class is usually included either with the arnaceous or the argillaceous classes. Silt rocks intermediate in composition between the arnaceous and the argillaceous group. Nevertheless, the composition of each group may vary between wide limits. Even in the argillaceous group of rocks devoid of hydrous aluminous silicate may occur. For example, detritus limestone mud although they form an important part of the sedimentary group rocks of silt grade have either to not been accorded or much attention or those of sand or clay grade silt occur abundantly on the products of fluvial lacustrine glacial 
and aeolian action many volcanic dust are of silt grade and should be included here silt are finer grain than sandstone but coarser than mud or clay they often exhibit very perfect lamination and are earthy in texture lacking the plasticity of clay and the rough feel of the sandstone as an example of wind formed silt the loose fine calcareous sediments of yellowish color which form thick uniform unstratified cell in center europe asia and united state may be cited many lake deposits and river alluvia will be found to be many of silt grade when their mechanical composition comes to be adequately investigated compacted silts are quite common in the sandstone of past geological ages and for them the appropriate term siltstone may be employed these rocks are widespread in many paleozoic formation where they have been described as gritty slates fine grained sandstone gravex quartzite silty gravex etc the clay rocks consisting of the finest material of the rock decay dust mud clay when more or less unconsolidated mud stone and cell then conjugate the argillaceous rock which comprise the finest product of rock decay and especially of decomposition are consequently made up, up chiefly of hydrous aluminous silicate in this group included are detritus deposit and their compacted rep representatives in which the average size of the grain is less than 0.01 mm when loose and dry this material forms dust with varying amount of moisture it form mud and clay when welded into a compact rock argillaceous material is called shell when it is well bedded and splits easily along the bedding planes and mudstone when it lacks the facility of cell although it may or may not be well stratified the mine rocks or argillaceous rocks are frequently difficult to identify because of their extremely fine slate of subdivision generally speaking they consist of two bin group the hydrated silicates of aluminum hydrated iron oxide etc produced by the decomposition of the rock second rock floor of comparatively fresh mineral fragments produced by disintegration some calcareous and carbonaceous matters along with finely divided sulfites of iron are to be found in many type of clay argillaceous rocks are therefore composed of the very finest particles labeled by rock weathering their chemical and mineral composition may vary enormously according to their percentage and according to the relative proportion of the two main group of constituents a common chemical character is a relatively high proportion of alumina resulting from the concentration of the hydrated aluminous silicates and finally divided mica most clay but not all possess the characteristic property of the plasticity when wet 
kaolin for example the purest type of clay is not plastic on the other hand the slimy pr produced by the fine crushing of the gold qu uh, quartz is very plastic the cause of plasticity is not depending on the composition or grain size it probably has some connection with the property of retaining moisture and absorbable substances dust mud and clay may be classed according to the mode of origin or marine fluvatile lacustrine glacier eolian or volcanic dust are formed of wind or volcanoes can be invoked for their production the finest product of the volcanic explain rarely accumulates by themselves but they contribute to other sediments and form a considerable part of those formed in the abysses depth of the ocean clay of glacial origin almost always require the cooperational of water for their deposition the rivers discharge from glacier fonts are laden with great quantities of fine rocks floor which gives the water a milky appearance the particles settle when the velocity abrates sufficiently and this occur or the river divides in distributaries or as it enter a lake the boulder clay however is the most typical argillaceous rock of glacier origin materials of clay great while usually form forming the bulk of the deposit is mingled with material of old other graded especially pebbles cobbles and boulders of all sizes scattered pebbles meals through the fine graded matrix boulders clay is frequently associated with fine laminated fluvo glacial sediments with alternating bands usually of silt or clay each pair of which is supposed to represent the seasonal deposit of year muds and clay of fluvial origin with silt from the aluminous found along the lower courses and on the flood plains of the larger river they vary gently in composition and usually carry a large quantity of organic and especially vegetable matters many delta and lacustrine deposit are of essentially similar character lakes act of settling ranks for rivers and lacustrine silt and muds which are spread slowly and evenly over the whole floor of the lake have a tendency to very fine thin lamination the sea however is the great repository for argillaceous sediments marine muds are chiefly deposited between the 100 fathom line the mud line and 2500 fathom contours line at greater depth only the abyssal ooze are found according to muri and renard recognize five type of marine muds blue mud red mud green mud coral mud volcanic mud etc of these the first named by the far the most abundant and important it ooze its color to finally divide organic matter and sulfide of iron red mud is confined to the limited area of the mouths of great rivers 
such as the Amazon and Huangwo, the color is due to the presence of a considerable proportion of ferric oxide. Green mud owes its color to the presence of the mineral gloconitic hydrated silica silicate of aluminous, iron and potassium. It more calcareous in composition than other marine mud. Coral mud and volcanic mud are formed in the oceanic area around coral Iceland and volcanic Iceland respectively. Clay cell and mud stones are considerable dust and mud. Clay may retain or much as 15 percent of the water, but in cell and mud stone, the process of wilding into a firm rock has driven out much of the original moisture. As these rocks are derived from dust and mud, they may in the same way be classed as marine, flavatile, etc. The constituents are the same as in mud and dust with the addition of contained orthogenic minerals. Elites is hardened boulder clay which have now been found at many horizon in the geological record. It is frequently accompanied by banded mudstone representing finely laminated worse sediments. China clay or kaolin is a white non-plastic material consisting in the raw state of the mineral kaolinite, pure hydrated silicate of alumina S2O3, 2SiO2, 2S2O, mingled with fragments of quartz, felspar, mica, etc., the residual minerals of granite. Pottery clay are very plastic and highly aluminous clay which are practically free from iron. Bricks clay are the more abundant variety of clay containing fluxes, especially compound of iron and magnesium which promotes drifting or incipient marginal fusion of the particles when they are burned, thus binding the particles firmly together. Fire clay is so called because owing to a low content of alkalis and other flux, they can be exposed to high temperature without melting. They are used for making contained kinds of hard refractory bricks for furnace, lining, sewer, pipes, chimneys and pipes which, which carry off chemical activities, gases. For these purpose, the clay must contain practically negligible quantity of alkalis, iron and magnesium and free silicate must be present only in a small amount. Mars is a clay rock which contain a considerable proportion of carbonates of lime and magnesia. The sedimentary rocks are classified based on grain size. There are four main groups are distinguished as follows rudaceous, arnaceous, silt rock, argillaceous rock. Rudaceous rocks are consisting chiefly of gravels, pebbles, marbles or boulders. Arnaceous rocks consisting chiefly of material of sands, grains, loose materials are solids. For further studies, please read the textbooks, references and links given in the text. Thank you very much.